So hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video we're going to have another look um, at progress on building this uh, tiny um, 009 gauge uh, model of a G-series uh, simplex locomotive. So um, if you remember from the last video in this series, uh, this is where we got to essentially. Um, a 3D printed um, body uh, using a Kato um, bogey from a, a Portram model um, that all fits nicely and my original plan had been to do the rest of the bodywork with um, etched overlays um, the problem being that the side panels and the front have um, a mesh a wire mesh grill and um, given their size and the number of holes um, I was finding it difficult to um, I couldn't well a, it's an odd um, type of uh, mesh. It's one of these ones where the material has essentially got slits cut into it and then it's pulled. It's not woven. Um, which means it has a distinctive shape, but it's not something that's available in very, very small sizes necessarily. Um, and I couldn't find anything that looked um, similar to to buy that, that would be the right, the right scale. Um, and experience of trying to etch um, through holes for the tiny Hudson Hunslet in 009 means I'm not convinced I could um, etch that either. Um, so if you remember from the last video my thought was well given that I've been able to print some really fine details on some of the 16mm scale models, things like the works plates which are, which are smaller than this um, but still have fine detail, could I essentially print the grill? Now I wouldn't obviously be able to necessarily print something that wore, had the holes all the way through the print because um, it would be just too fragile in this in this size. The wire, the, the, the print representing the wire would be really, really thin. Um, chances are it would just tear during the printing process. And certainly, you know, you could kind of, you know, stick your finger straight through it when it's printed. So that, that was no good. But my idea was to essentially have a solid panel at the front and the sides and then essentially cut out the holes in the mesh part way into that solid side so you could then kind of paint the um the 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 mesh black and then kind of dry brush on the color on top to, for the wires and it would look like there was holes in the print um so i've had a go at that i haven't got very far but i have had a go um so this is what we've got so far i haven't bothered taking the print off the supports be partly because i broke it uh, and partly because um, yeah, there are there are issues with the with the print as well. Um, but you can see if I get it to there we go. Um, the so this was printed in black, but I've then sprayed it with a red oxo primer to give you an idea of being able to see the the mesh. So you can see, although it's you know it's it's a bit difficult to see, but you can see that there are kind of wires in this mesh um, that looks yeah, reasonable. Um, strangely, the mesh runs in a different direction on the sides to the front. So again. Uh, there's the mesh on the front. You can see that um, this mesh should come down in a kind of rectangular piece at the bottom between the two sandboxes, uh, but that part of the print failed. There wasn't enough support, so that's why it sagged in the middle. Um, so I need to go in and rework rework that piece. But again, that's partly why this is still attached to its uh, supports. Um, but what I did do, as well as doing the, the red oxide primer, was I thought, well, there's no good point doing this if I can't actually paint it properly. So here we go. Um, now, every one of these I've seen, these locos is painted yellow, which is a bit of a problem because painting, I, having painted the Clayton yellow, um, yeah, it, it's a it's a pig to work with because it's quite transparent. Um, so getting it on over other colours is difficult. So what I did here was I'd already sprayed it with the red oxide primer. Um, I then essentially dry brushed the entire side with ivory. Um, I didn't want white. Um, I thought that would be too too stark. Um, and then once it was once that dried, I then dry brushed with um, with the yellow. Now you can see that's obviously not worked very well on the the surround to the panel, um, but it does actually seem to have worked reasonably well on the actual wire itself. We've got you know reasonable black holes and yellow wire. So I think as long as I'm a bit more careful about how I do this, I'd obviously instead of using a red oxide primer, I'd probably use a a grey maybe. Um, then um, possibly spray the body yellow um, 
and then flood the mesh areas black and then dry brush back on the top with uh, with with white and yellow and i think that might work um okay but it does allow you to see that the the grill is there it looks reasonable it's quite finely detailed um so i think that's going to work and certainly if i if i paint these as being kind of well used battered machines uh with a reasonable weathering then i think you know that even this issue with this paint on the side here um probably wouldn't look too wouldn't look too bad um so yeah so i need to i need to fix a bunch of the prints of this i tried to basically go as kind of prototypically accurate as possible so the way this this rear sheet um attaches and where it where it attaches and how thick it is but it's just it's just too flimsy um the same with the bottom of this so i think what i'm going to do is just kind of beef some of this up a bit um so it's a bit more um handleable as it were i mean these sides you can see if i squeeze these sides they flex a lot um so um what i can do obviously is the, the center is hollow i mean i need to be able to get a resistor in there to deal with the the poor tram um being a three volt chassis um but there's plenty of space for a resistor so what i'm going to do is i'm going to thicken up these sides so that when they when they are mesh they're not so flexible i mean the front's quite solid uh, well sorry this central bit is quite solid because it's a solid piece of print so obviously by cutting out the mesh um on the outside i'm thinning it down a lot uh, but I can just move the inner walls inwards a bit and that should that should be fine I can't move them too far in because obviously there is a gap around the sandboxes and I don't want it to look like the insides completely um, filled in but I, I think I can do something reasonably sensible there and obviously when this has got a, a, a roof on as well over the over the engine area um, the inside will be will be dark um, so you'll be you won't be able to see too much anyway um, so that's the plan um, so yeah, so I think that's that's progress. I think that works. I think that gives me a route forward without needing to to deal with the mesh. Because even if I could find some mesh of the right size, I'd still then have to cut it, fit it, and on the side panels that wouldn't be too bad. But on this front thing where there's a very thin frame around the edge and it's an odd shape, um, it would be a pain. Uh, that's that's a nice angle actually. You can see that the mesh here is running in the opposite direction. You've got kind of diamonds standing upright, so they're they're kind of taller than they are wide on this one. Whereas if you've got a side, they're wider than they are tall um, it's exactly the same mesh it's just rotated uh, rotated around um so yeah so i need to deal with um proper supports um, these are all over the place they're into the sides and all sorts so these are just auto generated supports because i didn't really care about anything other than testing the the mesh printing so i'll probably do some custom uh supports i don't usually bother with letting the the printing software do the supports i usually do the supports in blender myself for things um it also means that if I change the model, normally in like uh, Tutu Box, which is what I'm using for the for the slicing, um, you'd have to redo all the supports because you can't switch out the model and keep all the supports. Uh, whereas if I do the supports as part of the model in Blender, then I can um, I can keep them and just um, just tweak the model. So that's probably what I'll I'll do for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I need to deal with this obviously. Uh, but I think yeah, I think shows progress. I think we should be able to move on with this this one quite quite well. Um, as I say, I'm going to finish trying to print the cabless version, um, and then I'll do the, the cabbed version as well. Um, still in two minds about whether the roof of this is going to be print or metal. Probably print, but we'll have to see exactly how I how I do that. Um, it certainly make producing a batch if I wanted to easier because I wouldn't have to deal with um, getting parts etched. But we'll we'll see what looks best. Um, but for now, yeah, happy with that. Um, so uh, hopefully. It's school holidays, so um, looking after my, my eldest, certainly, and um, work requirements and things mean there's not a huge amount of time at the moment, but um, certainly hopefully once, once the summer's over, we should be able to progress this uh, quite quickly, if not, if not before then.